Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take A Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up and program this Insignia 3 device remote control. I'm going to show you some different methods of programming the remote and I'm also going to show you how to set up your soundbar. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, first things first, you're going to want to make sure that the batteries are fresh and installed correctly. They go right here under the back cover. This takes two AAA batteries, and if anybody's interested in the model number, it's right here under this sticker behind the battery cover. Okay, so there are three ways to program this remote. You can use the popular brands method for preset popular brands, direct code entry, using the list provided with the remote or the link below in the description. And last but not least, the auto code search. This will scan through all the available codes in the device category. I would use that as a last resort because it will be the most time consuming method. This remote does come preset to Insignia TVs and DVDs and Apple TV streaming devices. I also wanted to mention this apps button right here. Um, I've had some questions lately about people wanting to use Netflix or Hulu or whatever app might be built into your smart TV and this is how you would access this through this remote. Um, I do have a smart, a sharp smart TV and I use that button and it does work fine to uh, access the apps on the TV. Okay, so let's start with the popular brands method. Um, first, I'm going to give you a rundown of how to uh, do this because if I take the time to explain it as I'm actually programming it in the remote, the remote will reset itself. Um, so let me just do that first. So first you're going to want to turn on your TV and that's pretty much the first step in all these steps. Um, so per turn on the TV that you're trying to program to or the device and uh, press and hold setup until the remote's LED blanks twice. That's on this power button here. Press the device button that you're trying to program to. In this case I'm going to be doing a TV but it could be any of these three device buttons. It doesn't matter. The procedure is the same. But in my case, we're going to push TV. Okay, so we're going to push TV and the LED should stay lit. Now this next one is a little bit confusing. Press 0 for cable satellite streaming devices. Press 1 for TV. And press 2 if you're programming a DVD Blu-ray player. Um, so in my case, we're doing a TV, so we're going to press 1. So find your device code in the table shown here. Here's a picture of it right here. As you can see, each category has 10 brands listed. And my TV is listed under 7 for a Sony TV. So we're going to press and hold 7 until the TV turns off. It'll probably turn off fairly quickly. And then when you release that, as soon as your TV turns off or your device, the LED should blink twice and it'll store the code. All right, so let's run down that and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Press setup. Blinks twice. I'm pressing my device, TV. I'm pressing 1 for TV category. 1. And then I'm going to hold 7. Blink. Blink. Okay, the TV turned off. I got my two blinks and it stored the code. Okay, so that's the same procedure for any of those devices listed under any of these device categories. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty simple. Now moving on to direct code entry. As always, you're going to want to turn on your TV or device. Now this is important. Press the device button first before you push setup. Uh, it can be any of the three. I'm still setting up a Sony TV, so press TV. Then push setup. Wait for the two blinks. There we go. Now enter the code. 10810. All right, I got two blinks. That code is stored. Um, now what you're going to want to do is push power to test the Sony TV. Does it turn off? If it does, turn it back on and test the other functions. Volume, channel, menu, whatever. All right. If you only get one thing that works, um, you can try some other codes. For example, if your power works but your volume don't work or your channel up and down don't work or input selection or whatever, if something doesn't work, try some other codes. 
okay? If it works with that other code, then you're good, you're done. If you've tried all the codes and it still doesn't work, um, you can teach this remote to, uh, to learn codes from your original remote, and I'm gonna show you how to do that here shortly. But uh, basically, that's the direct code entry. Same procedure for any of those three device categories. It doesn't matter. You just have to find the code and test the code, okay? Now we're gonna be looking at the auto code search. You can use this as a last resort if your first two methods have utterly failed or if your device brand is not on the list and you just don't know what to do. There's no code for it, but um, this auto code search might hit on something that'll work. Um, this is going to be the most time-consuming method if your device happens to fall at the middle or the end of the list of codes stored in memory. All right, so we've turned on the device. Press and hold setup. Okay, in this case, we're working on a TV. Okay, remember 012, we're pressing 1. Okay, now press the OK button. There we go. Flashing. All right, so you just have to keep doing this and remember to keep it pointed at your TV the whole time. Okay, up oh, the TV turned off. We got two flashes, great. The TV turns off, so turn it back on. Test for functionality, do we have full functionality? Yes, we do, you're done. No, we don't, you can try this again and this time wait until the second code that activates your TV or if, if you're just missing one or two features, you can teach the remote using the learning function, okay? We're gonna cover that next. Okay, the Insignia remote also has a learning function. You'll have to have the Insignia remote already programmed to the device that you're trying to control using one of the previous three methods that I mentioned. Uh, but then after you do that, you can add functions from the original remote to the Insignia remote. And you would wanna do this if you have partial functionality like I described before. There's some feature missing, in other words and place them on a flat surface like this with the remotes no more than one or two inches apart. Hold the setup until we get two flashes. Enter nine, seven, five, okay? Press your device category. In this case, we're still working on a TV and then press the button that you're trying to teach on the Insignia remote. Okay, we got the flashes, constant flashes. Press the one corresponding on the original remote. We got two flashes. Now, if you want to add more features, press the device button again. Let's just do volume down. Volume down. Okay. Device. Channel up. Channel up. Device. Channel down. Channel down. All right. Once you're done with all the buttons you're trying to teach, press the setup button to store the codes. Okay, now if when you're doing this and you're pressing your uh, button on your original remote and you get a long flash on the LED right here, that means it didn't recognize the signal and you'll have to start over. So you can also add an audio device to this remote even though there's no device button for it, but you can only control the audio device's volume when you're in cable, satellite, and streaming mode, like if you're controlling your Roku or Apple TV or something like that. There's two ways to do it. The fast way is for the most popular brands. There's 10 codes listed. Here's a picture of the codes. Okay, so it's real easy to set that up. Press setup until you get the two flashes. Press mute. And my device falls under one for both, so press and hold one until your device turns on or off. Okay. Flash. Okay, it just turned off. Got my two flashes. That's it. Test the code. Obviously, it turns off. Um, test the code for volume and mute. I think that's about all that uh, the Bose can do. And that's it. And you can also enter a code um, with the device turned on. In my case, I'm doing a Bose soundbar. Uh, press and hold setup. Press mute. And then enter the code from the list. One, nine, three, three. All right. Press mute to see if it works. If it muted, you're done. If not, try another code if there's one available. 
Uh, something you might be wondering about, there doesn't seem to be a way to turn on or off your sound device. I wondered the same thing. But there is. Um, the remote has to be in cable, satellite, and streaming mode. All right there. Uh, so what happens is if you press and hold the power button until it blinks once, okay, watch that, blink, blink. What that did was it sent out a code for your Bose or your device, audio device, and it sent out a code for your TV. So the both devices do have to be synced, meaning they both have to be either both on or both off because what it does is it sends out a, a power code turning both on or both off. If you got one on and one off, it's going to flip them. It's gonna, you're going to have one off and one on. Okay, so that's it. That's how you turn on and off everything. Um, if you just want to turn off the TV by itself, of course, then just push TV and power, and that'll do that. But then go back to cable satellite streaming mode and do that again, and you can turn them both on together. All right, so that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, click on that thumbs up, and do subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.